How's it going everybody? My name is Jose Trujillo. I'm an artist and I want to share with you how to get a gallery show today. Okay, this is how this is what we're gonna share. How to get a gallery show. How do you get a gallery show? Well, as an artist, I understand that one, this is one of the major things that presses artists. We want to learn how to make it, how to get a gallery show. We want to learn how to get in the door. How do we get our artwork exhibited and on and on? This is a question that people have asked me countless of times, uh, countless times they've asked me, dude, how do you get a gallery show? How did you start it? How do you go about that? Well, it's, it's very simple. It's not easy. Not, nothing that I talk about is easy. But it is very simple, and many times it can be easy, but, but the, the work that you have to put in there, I mean, it's work, right? It's work. It's going to come down to work. So I just want to say that right off the bat. Uh, uh, here's, a, here's the thing, though. When you're thinking about a gallery show, you've got to think of it from the, from the owner's point of view. Remember, galleries? Galleries are small businesses. That's what they are. They're small retail businesses. Some of them are bigger. There's different types of galleries. There's the mom and pop. There is the glossy gallery, which is a tier up, right? Uh, or, or, or it's it's uh, emerging artist gallery, or, or you know they're trying to brand artists. And then there's the very high end, which is the, the the super glossy, you know, the high end New York Soho gallery. Those are very more. There's a there's a very difficult to get into. It's very much uh, connections, who you know, and and that's how they kind of play. Or or you do the permission based thing. Okay, which is which is you start climbing up slowly, and then they start giving you permission. Ah, now you exhibit it here. Now you're gonna exhibit over here, and and on and on. The gallery game itself, it's a permission. It's a permission-based concept. The gallery, okay, meaning that you have to ask permission. You go and you show your work, and you're like, "Can you please?" And then they go, "Well, yeah, your name." You know, or we have a list of people we're waiting. It's it's very much permission based. Uh, in today's world, of course, due to social media, uh, online platforms, you have Etsy, you have Sachi Art, Fine Art America, you have all these other places. eBay, uh, one of my favorite places. You have all these places online where you can sell work or you can market yourself. You no longer have to really ask permission, right? Uh, especially if you're trying to sell work. But if you're just looking to exhibit work, then many times you have to go back to this, asking permission. But I found out a way to not ask permission, to go around that. Because asking permission means that you have to go and form, uh, stay in line, right? You have to go and stand in line and wait for your turn. And many times you could just keep waiting forever and it's just not gonna work, right? This, this has happened to many artists where they wait and they wait. Um, some years ago, you used to put in submissions. I, st I, still, I think people still do that a lot today. Put in submissions. I remember I used to send in the slides with your artist bio, your artist statement, and your best photos. And by the way, they used to charge for that. They still do. Uh, some of them have gotten really sneaky where they actually, okay, I'm going to show you three types of galleries again. The, the three main types of galleries before I go on. Three main types of galleries are number one, mom and pop, right? These are the mom and pop galleries. These are their small businesses. This is maybe a little retail shop somewhere in Main Street or or by a college town or somewhere. These are the small retail spaces. Okay? Number two, these are your emerging artists. Emerging somewhere. Just imagine it says emerging right here. These are glossy galleries. Okay, meaning it's all white, it's really nice. They have a little bit more budget. It's usually not just one person. Maybe it's two, three people working it. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, uh, it's, it's a bit more established, just a bit more established. Okay, there's a little bit more funding. And then you have the third one, which is the New York, you know, let's call it the New York high end. These are your, your man, I can, I, can, I can draw, I promise, but I don't know if I can, if I can write. Uh, these are your high-end galleries. Your high-end galleries are, are your Soho, New York type of maybe your Paris galleries. These are where, where, where Banksy is being exhibited, uh, Peter Max, and, and uh, I don't know, Damien Hirst, whatever. You know, this, this is, this is the, these are the high-end places. These are very difficult to get into, and they're very much permission-based for who you know or something, something you did 
to get there, whatever whatever it is, something, I don't know whether you asked permission, you, you went, you started climbing, or or you know someone who knows someone who knows someone. There's different ways of getting in there, but they're much more difficult to get in here. Uh, these are more for established artists, okay? These are established artists. These are emerging artists. These are artists who are getting started. And this is just about anyone. You got something to sell? Take it to the mom and pop gallery. Uh, some of the emerging artists, you can do that as well if you know what you're doing, but especially the mom and pop. The mom and pop galleries is where I like to focus. Why? Although the price point is much lower here than here, these are more difficult to get into. Now, most people are trying to chase these galleries, and I understand. I, there's, there's, there's no problem. I mean, go chase them. But these ones, if you do it right, they're always transacting. They're always, they're selling smaller increments. There's, there's, they're, they're not selling maybe, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of painting. Or, you know, a painting is not worth 10K here. A painting may be at most 2, 3K here in the mom and pop, but they're always transacting. They're always moving product. So, that's just something to keep in mind, okay? They're all permission-based, by the way, except this ones. This ones, they try to play permission-based, sort of like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I accept you, but they're just mimicking the other ones. Uh, this one's, you, it's, it's very easy to get into, and I'm gonna show you how. Uh, I would focus on mom and pop and emerging artist galleries. I wouldn't focus on the high ends, the high end galleries. The very high end galleries are much more difficult, and and you usually you're gonna need a lot more persistence and, uh, and you, you have to stay longer in the game, okay? To get started, I would focus on the smaller galleries, especially if you wanna monetize. So this is what I'm gonna talk about, okay? Small, galleries are small businesses, guys. This is something to keep in mind. Always keep in mind, galleries are small businesses. People are only thinking about one thing if they're a small business. What is it that they're thinking about? Every, every person who is in business is always thinking about one thing, okay? What is it? Customers, right? Customers, they're trying to fill in their pipeline. They're trying to look for customers. Another word for customers we use in business is traffic, right? Full traffic, online traffic, whatever. Traffic, because traffic can be converted, we can convert traffic into customers. Why am I telling you all of this? The reason why I'm telling you all of this is that I'm, I'm I started this video, this video is about how to get a gallery show. I want you to get the basics down, okay? Before we move into how to get the gallery show, I want you to get the basics down. I want you to understand, before you go talk to someone, you gotta, you gotta think from their point of view, from their perspective. If you don't know how to do that, it'll, it'll be very difficult to get, to, to, to get a gallery show or to, to, to get your foot in the door because you're not thinking from their point of view, you're thinking from yours. This is what most artists do. We take our work and we're like, here, take care of me. Please exhibit me. Fix my problem. Fix my problem. This is not what galleries want. Nobody wants this. You want that? If I go to you and I'm like, fix my problem, buy my paintings, take care of my stuff. Uh, I, got, I got a wife and a child and I, I, got, I got to send them to college. Will you take care of that for me? Buy my, buy my art. Of course not. No one in the right room. Dude, go we'll take care of your own family, right? Of course. But, but as artists, we haven't taught, we, we, we've been taught to think that someone else is gonna take care of us. Someone else is gonna do the job. Someone else is gonna market. And well, I'm giving him, you know, him, her, I'm giving these people 50%, they should be taking care of this. Uh, no, they shouldn't. 50% of the, of the transaction, it's not for them to take care of everything. Now, before you were like, oh my God, no, that's not true, whatever. Any place, any establishment that you go, simply for putting something on the establishment, they get a cut, and they get a big cut. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, at the mall, uh, uh, whatever, right? They have, they, 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 have to, they have bills to pay. They have things to pay. Now, I'm talking about the, 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 the good ones, right? I'm talking about the good people. Now, there are some people that have gotten a little skimmy on the game. Some of the small galleries, especially the emerging artist galleries. These are called vanity galleries. These are called vanity galleries. What happens is that in their slow times or maybe they don't know how to sell or whatever is happening, they realize that artists are flooding to them, right? All these artists are like, please exhibit me, please exhibit me. And they got overwhelmed. While they're trying to sell the artwork of the artists they do represent, they have all these artists coming to them, please exhibit my work, please exhibit my work. What do you think they have coming to them in their mind? The, the, the ones that started getting uh, sneaky and, and I, I, I hate this practice. I don't like it. 
and I'm gonna talk about it, okay? Before I go in and jump into the next into the next thing about how how are you gonna get a gallery? The reason why is because all these artists are coming to them. They started saying, look, we'll review your artwork. I'm tired of getting submissions, okay? This is what these guys are saying. We'll review your artwork. We're going to start charging you 25, 50, maybe 100 bucks to review your artwork, right? Every time we review artwork, only send us three pieces or send us one piece for 25. If you want three pieces, it's going to be 75 bucks. We'll review it. They'll get a free intern to review it. They're probably going to throw everything away. They're going to throw it to the trash or, or send it back. There's open it and, and, and mail it back to you, not even look at it. Or probably get an intern from college and, and, and have someone do it for free and start getting paid for submissions, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about this because this is a bad practice that's happening. It's been happening for a while and it continues to happen. Uh, another thing that they're doing, since this wasn't enough, basically stealing from artists wasn't enough, the next thing that they started doing was, oh, you want to exhibit. I see that you're so desperate to exhibit. Here, I'll charge you a thousand bucks, right? I'll charge you a thousand bucks for gallery space. This is a bad practice. This is something that vanity galleries are doing. And I believe that the reason they're doing it is because they're taking advantage of artists. So beware of that. I just wanted to mention this. Beware of that. When someone is asking you, unless the game, unless the game is real and you see that it's real, that they're actually doing marketing, they're doing more, and they they have more artists, and, and they and other artists are saying, you know what, this is really working for me. They create, uh, I don't know, shout outs, marketing, and, and on and on. Then then it's something to consider. But most of them are don't even know what they're doing. Most of them are not even marketing. They're not selling. They're doing it wrong. So I'd be very wary to walk into that, okay? So be very careful with that. I just wanted to show you the three types of galleries and how they function. This does not mean that every emerging artist gallery functions that way, or when artists do, when art galleries do jury shows, when they ask for submissions, that they're really stealing or they're doing something bad. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't mean that. What I, what I do say is be very careful when they're asking for money beforehand, because you are providing a product. When you're providing a product, they shouldn't be asking for money. You should be looking to see how you both are going to benefit, okay? Uh, so, here it goes. Here is how you start getting a gallery's attention. Look, a gallery is looking for customers, okay? If a gallery is looking for customers, then you have to start thinking, how, what is this gallery? What, what's going on with this, with this gallery owner? What's the problem? What, what can I help with? One of the things that you can do is start writing, making a list, okay? Making a list, make a list of all your assets. Make a list of your assets. I know, I know this is counterintuitive from what you probably heard anywhere else, but hey, I'm different, okay? <laughs> make a list of your assets. What are your assets? Not just your artwork. Well, one of your assets is your artwork, okay? Your, the originality of your artwork is simply by having your artwork. It doesn't matter. One of your assets is your artwork. Another of your assets could be that you have, I don't know, uh, you have followers on Instagram. Uh, social media, right? Different social media platforms. I don't know, LinkedIn, Facebook, and on and on. Maybe, maybe one of your assets is that you yourself understand Facebook ads. You took a course or you understand Facebook ads. Or maybe someone you know does Facebook ads, that's an asset. Okay, you gotta make a list of your assets. It's not just your artwork, guys. This is where most artists go wrong. They're like, oh, it's my artwork, it's my artwork. Yes, it's your artwork, but you gotta have something else. Why? Because what you're going to do now is you're going to exchange your assets, okay? You're gonna communicate to the gallery that you are going to be able to help them what? You need to help them what? Get customers. Get customers in the door. This is the only problem galleries have, guys. Especially the smaller the gallery, the, the bigger the problem this is. The bigger the gallery, the more ads they have, the more budget for marketing, advertisement, and ads they have. The smaller the gallery, that's why I say focus on, 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 on mom and pop galleries, this is the biggest problem. They either, they might have the budget, but they don't have the time, or they're afraid of using their budget for marketing to solve their problem. This is a very common mistake hap that, that happens to small businesses. They're afraid of using their assets, their budget, their money, their income to use it to, to get more customers. So 
So this is where you come in. Or maybe they don't have time. They're, they're overworked. That's why it's mom and pop. Maybe it's just a couple or two friends just working the gallery, being overstretched, overworked. They feel like they're overwhelmed. They don't have time and on and on. This is where you come in. What do you have? One of your assets could be time. What if you help them market? What if you tell them, hey, I can help you, uh, I can help you post stuff on Facebook. I can do shout outs on Instagram for you. And on and on and on. Now the way to do this, the way to do this is not by saying, here's here's what I'm gonna do for you and and, and you know take care of my stuff, right? No, the way to do this is it's, it's a subtle game. It's a subtle game. What you want to do is you want to get to a gallery and you want to communicate to them your assets. You want to be able to tell them, look. Uh, I understand that you are a small business, blah, blah, blah. I, I can help you get people in the door, you know. I can, get, I, I can help you get people in the door. I can help you get, you know, X number of people. Or I can help you, I can help you uh, reach more local clients. I can help you get more people. Uh, I, can, I can help you reach out your clients by using my artwork. I'll show you how. I'll show you how to reach more clients. I'll show you how, how to get and contact your client base so that you can get them to come and have a reason to come. I'll show you how due to your assets because you have your assets, right? You're going to constantly be slapping your assets. That's what you're gonna do. This is your badge, your badge, your badge of honor. Your It's not your ribbon that you won at some little gallery show. Uh, it's not your little ribbon, right? Oh, best plein air painter. That means nothing to galleries, okay? This, this is what galleries care about because this brings customers. So they're thinking about what are you going to do for me? Why, why, why would I exhibit your art? Think about it. Okay, just a little example, a ridiculous example. Here it goes. You go into the gallery and you're like, oh, I have my artwork. And they're like, yeah, well, so does a thousand other artists have artwork that want me to exhibit for them. What are you going to do for me? Okay, one scenario. Next scenario, Justin Bieber goes in there. He doesn't know how to paint. He doesn't, he's not an artist, anything. And he says, hey, I, I have a nephew who is horrible at creating artwork, doesn't understand anything about creating artwork, but can you exhibit his artwork? And, and I'll make an appearance here at seven o'clock. Uh, I'll be here for 15 minutes and sign autographs or something. What do you think the gallery owner is gonna say? Oh my God, where have you been all my life? Of course, right? This is not because they're bad or because they, or because they have no integrity or none of that. This is because this is what they care about, guys. Please get this. They care about customers. A small businesses, this is what they're thinking about. So this is how you get a gallery. You have to go find out. Not, not, it's not a bribe. It's not like, oh, here, take that. No, in, in the marketing world, they call it an ethical bribe. But it's not, I don't even think it's a bribe. It's an exchange of value. Here, here's what I can do for you. And then you tell them, I'm an artist. You know, if you exhibit my work, here's what I can do for you. You have to tell them what they're going to get. If you don't communicate to them, if you don't communicate to the gallery, uh, to, the, to the owner, what they're going to get, then they, 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 it doesn't make any sense. They're like, what, why would I want to exhibit? Everybody wants me to exhibit their work. Why would I want to exhibit your work? Oh, because my work is so nice. It's great. It's got great framing. Trust me, that is not what they're thinking about. Not a small business. That's not what they're thinking about. They're thinking about, oh my God, what if you have an email list? What do you have on the email list? Okay? What if you have an email list of, I don't know, uh, 500 people that have bought from you before? Oh, I said 500. 500 people that have bought from you before. 1,000 people. Or, or what if you have 10,000 people following you on Instagram? Now, if you don't have this, this thing, so that doesn't mean you can't. You gotta really start searching and you gotta really start. Maybe you know people who have this who you can exchange something of value with those people so that they can in turn help you get that gallery show. Maybe you have a friend who has 50,000 followers on Instagram. Maybe you have a friend who has, who has a, a, an, a, an email list. Or maybe you have a friend who, has a, 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 who understands Facebook ads, who understands how to market. Maybe you, maybe you can write blogs, right? And you're, you're like, I can write blogs for you. I can write articles for you. I'm gonna, see, you, you have to really put in the work. You have to bring as much value as possible. Once you start communicating, right? Once you start communicating to a gallery what you can do for them and what values, maybe it's all of them. Maybe it's not, you know? But the pitch has to be solid. You need to help them bring customers, okay? You need to be able to communicate with them how you're going to get them customers. And you need to learn how to do that. You need to learn how to do that. But 
But here, in this, in this, in this crash course, I wanted to explain to you, look, you first have to do this. You have to do this in order to get a gallery show. This is how you get a gallery show, guys. You look at your assets, not just your artwork. You don't just say, oh, my artwork is so great. No, you, ha you make a list of your assets, and then you communicate to the gallery how you're gonna solve their problem. Because you want them to what? Because you want them to solve your problem, right? You want them to show your artwork. So make a list of assets, okay? Make a list of assets, that's number one, okay? So that then you can communicate. You wanna communicate this effectively to the galleries, okay? So for what? You want to communicate how you're going to solve their problem with your list of assets, with your friendships, with the people you know. Maybe, maybe there's, a, a, I don't know, 50 people that can go to a gallery show in one night. That's something of interest for them. You know, maybe you can put together 100 people that can go to the, you call your aunt, you call your friends, everyone. And, and people would be like, no, but, but what, what does that mean? What does that not mean? It means everything to a gallery. It means everything. It's walk-ins. It's people. It's 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 people going in there. Maybe they don't buy your artwork. Maybe they buy a, a print from someone else. And so that makes the gallery owner happy, right? They're like, oh my God, there's people walking in. There's people buying stuff. There's people asking questions. This is what gallery owners want, right? So you make a list of assets. You communicate how you're going to solve their problems so that they solve yours. And you get a gallery show. This is not the world of exhibit my artwork because my art is great. Guys, you are in competition with the whole world right now. Everybody is trying to exhibit their work. Everybody has Instagram. Everybody's trying to show their work. The problem is that not everyone is doing it enough and not everyone is doing it effectively. This is how you get a gallery show, guys. Make a list of your assets, communicate it effectively to the gallery, okay? Especially the small ones because they're not gonna brush you off. Okay, communicate effectively. This is not done through email. This is not done through uh, maybe a phone call. A phone call, you can do this, definitely. But this is definitely in a local place. It's You have to walk in there and you have to talk to them and you have to do it brief. You have to do it fast. You have to do it quick because otherwise it's just going to push you out. They know that you're an artist. They don't want to deal with you, right? What they want is a customer. They don't want another problem. You are a problem to them many times because you want them to fix your problem. So you go in there telling them effectively how you're going to fix their problems so that they can give you a gallery show. You do that enough with enough people, you will have gallery shows beyond, uh, as Napoleon Dynamite said, beyond your wildest dreams. <laughs> you will have gallery shows all the time because you're, you're, you're effectively communicating to them how you're going to help them, how you're going to solve their problem. All right? So this is how you get a gallery show, guys. I hope that this... Uh, you got some some value from this. Go out there, start doing it. Uh, you don't have to, don't use perfectionism. Just do it. Just do it. Make a list. Oh man, I, I know someone who can write articles. Man, I have a I have a friend who it does great blogs and video. Maybe we can do a video. Here's a little extra tip. Maybe you can do a video of the gallery and put it on YouTube. I have a friend who has twenty thousand followers on YouTube or subscribers. Hey, we're gonna put this on YouTube and blah blah blah. Why would you do that? Oh, I want to do it because I want to help you. And then you tell them you're an artist. They're like, if we exhibit my work here, oh my God, we can even get more views and more people into the gallery. Oh, I like that. You know, the gallery owner's gonna be like, I like that. Let's talk about it more. Now, if you want to learn how to effectively, effectively pitch and communicate this, I put out a little video. Okay, it's a workshop. It's, it's not so little. It's about an hour long where I go more into detail about everything here that I'm explaining to you guys and exactly what to say. Okay, the right pitch, an effective, an effective pitch. Okay, if you guys are interested in that, hit me up. I don't know, uh, uh, put in the comments below here, uh, or you can find me at Jose Trujillo Art on Instagram. That's at Jose Trujillo Art, and I'll show you. I'll, I'll send you to a link where you can effectively, where you can learn how to do that pitch. Okay, this is at. Jose Trujillo Art. You can find me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, okay? Or Jose Trujillo Art.com.
Okay? So you can find me at Jose Trujillo Art on Instagram, or you can go to Jose Trujillo Art.com, or you can just Google my name. I'm sure I'm going to, if you Google my name, I'm going to pop out there. Uh, because, I mean, you're Googling my name. <laughs> Not because I'm famous, but because my name should be there. Uh, so I'll, I'll send you a link to, to, to how to get that video. The video is 79 bucks. I mean, some people are like, man, it's too much, 79 bucks. Guys, 79 bucks is nothing. It's, it's, you either spend that at the movies or you learn how to communicate that effectively, concisely. It's the perfect pitch. I put in years of effort to, to, to concise that pitch. I show you exactly how to say it, how to say it so that you can grab their attention and you have their full attention and then you just, you just shoot, you know, you just shoot the, the, the pitch and, and it's done, all right? So I'll leave you with that. My name is Jose Trujillo. If you're interested, let me know and uh, let's do this, all right? Take care and I hope you take action regardless of whether you get my pitch or not. Don't even worry about that. Take action. What I want to do is I want you to get to take to 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 get to a place where you actually start taking action. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.